Hey everyone, my name is Sean and this is my beginner's guide for the Cydia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia. I absolutely love this game, it's a very very good PvE Final Fantasy based game, but it can be very very overwhelming. When I started this game, the one question I had on my mind was, what are my priorities and what do I want to tackle in what order? Um, trying to make sense of that on your own can be very very difficult and there's definitely a lot of things that I've learned along the way that I kind of wish I knew when I actually started the game so this is my guide to maybe help some newer players get into this game and make sense of the dense information around playing this game. Now um, I've done the tutorial this is a brand new account here and so there's a couple of things which I just want to quickly point out that you should know when playing this game. First of all there are two versions of this game. There's a Japanese version and then there is the global version. We play. I'm playing on the global version and the advantage of playing on the global version is that you kind of have a, um, are able to predict and have enough foresight onto what's coming because our version of the game is behind the Japanese version by about a year. Now this means we can kind of have a rough idea of what characters are coming out, what events are going to happen and therefore plan ahead and decide what we're going to spend our resources on. Yes. One website that's really, really good for looking at that is Tomboy Trope, which shows you kind of what are the, all the predicted characters to come. But also FF00 Tip also is a, it's a very mobile friendly version, which you can just have a look at and see, okay, I want to invest in Vaughn, I'm going to save up for him when he comes out. Um, there are many, many, really good community resources here. Again, Tomberry Trope is amazing. This is basically the bible for the game. They have amazing resources, great infographics on the characters, great guides for beginners, great guides for endgame content, and I really, really strongly recommend you check that out. But there's also really good content creators as well on YouTube. I strongly recommend checking out Josephir. Um, I use them a lot. Liz87, Black Nero, Jet Stringen. And if you want end game guides for uh, tackling the toughest content, Munchkins Gaming is very, very good for doing so. So take advantage of these content creators that are putting that content for free um, in order to make our games uh, a little bit more easier to do in terms of clearing content. Now, with that kept in mind and understanding that there's a whole lot of resources out there, uh, a couple of things that you should know. Um, Rerolling when you sign up your account is kind of pointless in this game. Um, even if you manage to pull a high tier weapon for one of the characters on the uh, banners available to you at the start of the game, it doesn't really matter that much. This game is all about building an army as opposed to a single character or a team that has an overpowered weapon. Um, you're going to need to have a diverse cast of characters in order to fulfill different roles in this game in order to tackle the end game content. And by the time you get to that point, um, that won't happen overnight, by the time you get to that point, and you're able to get a good roster of maxed out characters, you will probably be a couple of cycles down the line and you'll probably need to build characters that are relevant to that point in time. So re-rolling your account really doesn't help you out much here. This game is not pay to win at all. Uh, there are over 800,000 gems in the game in permanent content alone. So if you are able to farm effectively and you uh, know where to uh, get your resources, you should be able to build up that army of characters quite easily. Um, so now in terms of prior, uh, priorities, what should you do when you start off with? Definitely to begin with, you want to back up your data and protect yourself. Go over to the user data tab, take a note of your ID, keep that safe in case you need to recover your account somehow or your device goes down. Uh, you can also back up your data to Square Enix or to Google Play. And then you could also do batch download as well. This will speed up the game in terms of your farm ability and uh, how fast you go through the game. So I definitely recommend doing so. Once you've done all of that outside, there are then two types of content you want to try and tackle. There's temporary content and then there is permanent content. Your priority whenever you start the game should always be towards doing temporary content first, then doing the permanent content at your own leisure. Now, um, in terms of temporary content, there are different types. You have dailies, weeklies, and then like, I guess you call them fortnightlies based on the event. For your dailies, there are three things you need to do. If I go to the missions tab here, you have your dailies tab, and this is always the same, clear requests and you always get these rewards. These rewards are very helpful, um, and it's really easy to get them, so you might as well use that. I strongly recommend doing it for the Decidia points, which I will talk about in just a moment. Other daily content that you want to do is also do your free draw. Every single day you log in, you can do one free draw on a banner. Um, this often isn't a really good weapon, but I did actually manage to get a BT for Tidus's, um banner here off a free draw so it can be good so it is worth logging in to do so. 
The last thing uh, that is a daily piece of content here, once my game loads, uh, I'm going to go over to the quests. And onto the quest screen, we have your daily hunts. Every single day, you get to tackle one hunt, which is always a giant cactor. Now, by beating a giant cactor, you get two cactor uh, uh, tickets or uh, gems or rewards, and you can then collect those to spend on these items here. So you might as well log in every day just to collect these and farm these up. Now you don't have to actually log in every day. You can stack them up, up to three hunts at a time. So you can do this maybe just twice a week. Let it build up to three, do all three at once, and then do the other three. And the fight isn't that hard. Um, it's a high level, but it's a really easy boss to beat. So um, it's very, very easy to do. So that's the first thing you want to do in terms of daily based content. Then you want to do your weekly content and your weekly content comes from uh, spending your Decidia points. Every single week these first couple of items will refresh. Um, the main ones you want to get are the Power Stones, the Elite Hunt application and the Potions. If you remember from the Dailies tab, every time you log in you get 300 Decidia points by clearing a quest. So if you were to do that every day you will get 2100 points for Decidia points. And then that is enough to buy these free every single week, plus have 50 left over to spend. Eventually, when you do more content though, you get loads of these points, and I'm always finding that I'm capped out about these, so it isn't too hard to farm these as well, but just be aware that these will set every single week, so take advantage of them when you can. Then you've got your event-based fortnightly-ish kind of content. First of all, if we go to the missions tab again, and we have your events tab this is temporary content that will expire so currently this one here will expire in three days and you work your way through these as much as you can to the best of your ability even if your characters are quite low level these contents are designed to be accessible to all players so even queen's uh, new event here which is uh, starts off at just level 10 and you should be able to beat that um, and uh, get some rewards from it by beating this content you will get tokens to spend on items so you can constantly farm these again and again particularly getting such as the uh, more gems or more tickets or more decidia points from that so you kind of want to do that as much as you can or you're willing to do so but i strongly recommend trying these content to get these points here which are called enhancement points that you need to do your characters boards you definitely want to get these as much as possible they are limited in supply and eventually you will find that man you don't have enough to do that to build as many characters as you want to so uh, try to tackle this content when you can um, similarly uh, as well as in the events tab you also have things like lost chapters the current lost chapter or side story is for gladio so you can go through that and try to do as many quests as you can um, the first mission here is only level 10 and by doing that you get 40 gems um, no you get 60 gems actually um, but if you get the high score as well, no, you get 80 gems, so that's nice to do, and also 5 of these uh, uh, power stones here, by just beating these couple of monsters here, so it's not too difficult, and even just doing dialogue choices, I got 50 gems just by doing that alone, so it's worth just even just dipping your toe into these uh, events, and trying to do as much as you can, until you hit that wall of like, right, my characters aren't strong enough, I'll stop here and go do some permanent content. So, that is your first priority is to do temporary content. You then want to go and do as much permanent content as you can. But first, before what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch this account, account up. I'm going to do as much temporary content as I'm willing to do so. And then I'll go through what permanent content you want to focus on to begin with. Okay, everyone. So now on this account, I've now done my daily content. I've set to my daily mission rewards and done my hunts. So I've got a nice chunk of gems. And now I'm going to show you a bit more of other content that you can start working on. So we're going to start looking at permanent slash temporary content. The first one are the choker boards. Um, the choker boards will have permanent and temporary content available to you. The first board is the novice board, which you can start working your way through to get these rewards. Um, this is like tic-tac-toe. Once you get a line and do the rewards, you get extra bonuses for completing that line and when you do that you then get uh, once you finish the whole board you get a reward for doing them all you first have the novice one and then i believe you get an advanced one later on um you'll kind of do this naturally as you play through the game anyway so um you'll get these rewards no problem 
Then there's also a temporary one available to me at the moment because of when I started this account. And you can actually also start working on this as well. You might not be able to do all of it, but you'll be able to definitely do some of it. So it's things like get an item with the city points. That's really, really easy to do. We've spoken about how to do that already. Um, clear 40 quests with Tidus in your party. Both Tidus, Aerith and Rosa, who have bonuses right now, have lost chapters available to you. So if you want to go ahead, which I have done already, and unlock these characters and start using them, you can start working on these rewards. But that depends on your account, whether they, they, um, whether you're starting at the same time as I can. Maybe in the future, if you start, it'll be clear 40 quests with Zidane in your party or Yuna in your party. And you can go ahead and unlock them through the story or the lost chapter and start getting rewards through this choker board. So the choker boards are one uh, thing you can start working on. The next thing I would then also definitely start working on are the novice missions. The novice missions are designed to teach you certain parts of the game. Um, they focus a lot on leveling up cloud and uh, improving cloud. And they, um, by following this, you will kind of make cloud quite overpowered for the level of content at the start of the game. The whole point of this is to kind of get you caught up onto doing higher level content as fast as possible and there's some really really good rewards so I strongly recommend going through them. Don't worry too much about the World of Illusions, you will um, come to World of Illusions a little bit later on when your rank is higher but if you want to go ahead and do these you can. All the guides on how to do these, if you click on the Mog Tip tab, are here and it will teach you how do you raise your character's level, how do you equip your weapons and stuff. So just work your way through these novice missions and get these lovely rewards. Also at this time for this account, there is a raid going on. A raid is an event where everyone's progress is tracked and so there are rewards available to me right now which I'm going to accept in a bit. In fact, I'll accept them right now. Uh, you'll get a nice chunk of rewards. Um, this might again not be available to you straight away because there might not be a raid going on. It is temporary based content. But if there is, take advantage of it and go ahead and grab all of those juicy rewards as well. So I'm going to clear off these uh, rewards and then I will talk about what to do next. Doing your novice mission is designed to teach you how to develop your characters and make them stronger. There are a couple of rules however which I think you should follow whilst you're also using your resources to make your character stronger. So, if you go to the Enhancements tab, again just to show you, uh, press the button here and then click on Enhancements, you can go to the menu where you can develop your character by their uh, own strength, their weapons and their armour, and then we'll talk about summons a little bit later on. The first one we're going to look at is Crystal Strength. If you click on this tab, you can then uh, use the green button here to sort your characters, and I like to do it by Crystal Strength level, so your highest level characters are at the top. As you can see, I've already developed Crowd's Crystal level to level 50, and if you want to let raise his normal level beyond level 50, you have to take him um, up to, uh, to the level caps by giving him more gems. Now, it is safe to level every single character to uh, a maximum of level 60 without having to worry about burning through your resources. The tier 5 uh, version of clusters, which is this one here, which I only have 450 of, and the tier uh, 6 version, which is the big cluster here, are limited to certain content, and you will only get these through events. All the other lower tier uh, crystals can be farmed whenever you want to, and I'll show you how to do it in just a moment. So keep that as a rule of thumb. If you want to level up a character, you are safe to go up to level strength 60, without having to worry about running out of crystals, uh, anything beyond that becomes a little bit more limited. As you progress through the game, it becomes really, really easy to farm these higher tier rewards and you don't have to worry about it too much, but it is something you will eventually find yourself running out of. So if I level up Carol to 60, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And there he goes, nice and strong. So the cloud can now be leveled up to level 60. Now, if I come out of this menu, the next thing we want to do is level him up. Normally through this game, when you're doing your farming, you're going to be getting XP for your characters anyway. So what you end up doing is having one character who's good at farming whatever content you're doing, and then you can put two weak characters to gain free XP as you do them. And then you can use boosters to get them even more XP as you're doing other farming. But in case you don't want to go through a uh, farming method and you just want to use items to automatically level up your characters, you can go to the level up tab here. So if I go click on Cloud already, we can use these chocobo items to level him up to level 60. So if I press auto, you will automatically allocate these. And as you start the game, you get quite a lot of these because it wants you to start leveling up these characters. So hit confirm, 
go to yes, and then crowd is now level 60. Every uh, five levels a character has, or every, um, well, you see it right now. Uh, every, yep, there we go. Every time, every 10 levels you let raise a character, you then increase your rank. Your rank is going to be really important for World of Illusion contests a little bit later on. But keep that in mind that that's how you raise your rank, by leveling up your characters. Once you have raised your character's crystal level and their uh, natural level, you then want to go and uh, raise their equipment. And the equipment and armor is the most important part of developing your character. And so there is a couple of rules to do here. You have your weapons, armor, artifacts and blooms. Artifacts and blooms I will talk about later on, but first we'll look at weapons and armor. I like to sort these tabs by CP again to have your strongest items at the top and also your strongest armors at the top instead of doing it on obtained but there are other filters there so if you just want to focus on cloud you can then filter it just down to final fantasy 7 weapons or so on now there are many different types of weapons and many different types of armor and you need to know how to treat them anything that is bronze tier armor is practically garbage at this version of the game and isn't worth using and the best way to use these items actually are to get a higher tier weapon such as Clouds or Guard and Galic uh, Sword and use these weapons as EXP to raise um, the level of your higher tier weapons. Now it does have a cost, it does cost gear to do this so you that is a limited resource but you can farm more gear when you need to so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. But also when you want to leave, um, so I'll press confirm so Brown's tier weapons aren't really useful at all in this game. So they're basically just used as fodder. You will get a lot of those, so um, they will fill up your inventory quick. So use them to raise the level of your higher tier weapons. Silver tier weapons are also really not worth actually using, but they do have passives which are really worth keeping onto. So I actually prefer not to sell my silver tier weapons and keep them until I can fully limit break them. For example, Cloud's Buster Sword. If I were to maximize and fully limit break this weapon, I will get a, a passive of raise his attack by 36. It's not a massive amount of attack, but later on down the line, there are passives which you don't need, such as defense, which you can then swap this for and give a little bit more attack. Um, so I recommend holding onto your silver weapons because you're going to get a lot of them later on and focus on and uh, keep them for, so you can limit break them later on. Now, um, one of the novice missions wants you to level up one of Cloud's weapons to level 20. So, we're going to go ahead and level up Organics a little bit more by pressing confirm. And other than using your other weapons to level up a higher tier weapon, you can also use orbs. Uh, click on the orbs tab and press auto. And then it will automatically allow you to level up that uh, weapon up to its max limit. Now, the max limit for a weapon for a CP15 weapon, that is Crystal Point 50 weapon, is level 20. But when you get more copies of this weapon, you'll be able to limit break it and raise it even higher. I'm going to show you a little bit more about that now. I believe the Novice tab will show us how to do that or encourages you to go ahead and do that. So we're now going to go to the Novice missions. And... No, we have to equip Cloud first before we get the other copy of it. So I'm going to head and, go ahead and accept these rewards. And then we're going to keep it accepted because uh, it's going to keep, keep on throwing these rewards at us. And now we're going to go back to uh, Cloud. So we're going to click on this tab here. Click on Cloud Space or click on Party if he's not in your main party right now. Find Cloud. And then we're going to equip him with his weapon. If you hit the Auto button here as well, it will automatically equip their highest uh, tier weapon. So hit Auto here. We'll give him his organics and also it uh, changes his armor as well. So now that we've done this, we can go back to the uh, novice mission tabs and that should give us another reward. Um, this reward should be another copy of his weapon. And you might be wondering, why do you want multiple copies of their weapon? Well, um, I'm going to go uh, show you that as we talk. So uh, let's quickly accept those. Here's a second copy. This is what you use in order to maximum limit break your weapons. Now, a character has different tiers of weapons. They have, uh, in terms of their gold weapons, they have a CP15 weapon, a CP30 weapon, uh, EX weapons, legendary weapons, and then certain characters have BT weapons, and in the, uh, in the near future we'll be getting BT pluses. 
in order to fully level up your character and deck out their kit you want to get um, you want to fully limit break every single one of these weapons in order to get these weapons you need to use your gems in order to uh, pull up banners and we'll talk about more pull strategies and how you get them but for now you don't need to worry about max limit breaking your weapons too much because your characters just by their level and their crystal strength are going to be so overpowered they'll get through most of the base content in the game without having to worry about your armor weapons but because it's a novice mission i'm going to kind of cover it a bit here now so we're going to now go over to our weapons tab we're going to go to enhancements again enhance and realize and we're going to kick the weapon that we've already leveled up and that cloud has equipped and we're going to hit confirm and then we're going to use the other copy of the weapon to limit break it so by doing so it increases the cp uh, up by five from cp 15 to cp 20 increasing its cost but then also increases its level so we can level it up further so hit confirm actually we're going to use the orbs orbs uh press auto and now this will become level 25 increasing how much damage it does and that is uh, the way you develop your uh, characters here. Now, every time you uh, limit break a weapon, it automatically locks it because it doesn't want uh, the game doesn't want you to accidentally sell a weapon you're working on. We need to do this two more times in order to limit break this weapon. But for now, because that's as far as we've taken it, we're going to leave it there and we're going to lock it. And in fact, I strongly recommend locking all the weapons you want to keep. So I'm going to lock a uh, Warrior Light's weapon here. And I'm going to lock the, uh, this Buster Sword here until you fully limit break them and are ready to get rid of them and you uh, later on. The same can be done for armor. So we're going to hit uh, Cloud's Bracer. He has a Shinra Beta equipped. So we're going to use the brown tier weapons, which we don't really care about as EXP fodder. And we're going to get rid of them. You can do up to 30 of these at one time. We've got 18 of those. Then we're going to limit break it with the, the other copy of the bracer and then we're going to use the orbs in order to um, fully limit break it. Um, in terms of armor, while I said um, while I said um, uh, getting the passes of your silver tier weapons is really important, your armor isn't necessarily so important. It normally just gives you something like extra defense, but if you want to, and I like to do so, you can limit break those weapons because you're going to get a lot of these silver weapons anyway because they're kind of low tier uh, trash. So um, you might as well get the passive of these by limit breaking them. So that's again just to cover, uh, there's, that's a few principles when limit breaking your weapons. Keep your silver tier weapons, keep your gold tier weapons until you have fully limit broken them. And then keep your silver armor, keep your gold armors until you're fully a gate, uh, early break them. And then when you do so, you get the passive ability, which you can then equip to your character before selling your weapon. So let's uh, go on from that and go back to our novice missions. Now, um, in terms of novice missions, I think it will guide us. I don't know what else there is that it wants us to do. So it's uh, giving us rewards for limit breaking a weapon. And now it wants us to get some high gear armor for Cloud. Okay, so we can do that now. So let's go and get some high gear armor for Cloud. Um, we can also accept these player rewards. Uh, it will keep on throwing these at you. There's so many rewards here. Uh, like I said, there's over 8,000 gems in the game for you. And now if you want to get the higher tier armor for Cloud, you can go to the item exchange. And you can change your high G HG tokens for higher armor. Um, this is really important to do. Um, as you can see, there's quite a few uh, tabs here. Um, these are all there to enhance your character. In terms of armor, you have 5 star uh, guard token armor and then you get the 7 star armor. You can't uh, get, uh, you can't get, uh, buy these until you buy these ones. So let's go ahead and use this. And you feel free to read that if you wish. And then now we're going to buy Cloud's armor. So it has one for every single character. The character whose current events going on will be at the top but then everyone else will be down the list. Now, rather than just sort through all of this, I'm just going to filter this out, remove, and then we're going to find Cloud. So, Final Fantasy 7, confirm, and here is Cloud. There are two types of HG armor. You have your. Um, if I click on it, can I see what uh, the CP level is? Okay, so you have your lower tier one, and then you have your higher tier one. The higher tier one, or HG armor two, it does cost a bit more, so we're going to exchange for the Diamond Bangle. Now, 
again, before you can buy your higher tier armor, you have to fully limit break the lower tier armor. So in order to do that, you need to get four copies of the armor and use your resources to limit break them. To, um, you can easily do that by pressing auto. That will give us four copies of his HG armor. So we now have four copies of the diamond bangle. And we're going to come back out and now enhance those and limit break them. So we're now going to go to the enhance tab. And then we're going to go to armor. And then we're going to limit break this armor here. So we'll click one. Use the other copies to limit break it. And then we're going to use orbs to level it up to max. I don't have enough orbs to level this up. So when we get more orbs we can carry this on. But for now we'll just use what we have. And then... We're on our way to maximizing our character out. Now we'll equip Cloud with this and he will gain a more higher CP cap to equip more passive abilities and this will help him out more. Once you fully limit break this you can then go back to the high gear armor and buy another tier, the higher tier armor which will increase his defense and his stats even more. And that is uh, talking about developing your character. That is the main core of developing your character's crystal strength, level up and enhancing your weapons and armor. In the last part of the video we just talked about different ways to develop your character and I kind of glossed over different resources which you need in order to level up and maximize your character out. Uh, crystal strength, in order to raise that you need crystals, uh, you need chokeable items in order to level up your character or you can just get that free EXP and you need multiple copies of weapons in order to maximize your character's armor and their weapons. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about how to get these. So first of all in terms of crystal Crystals can be farmed up to uh, level 60 items by going to the events tab and going to the permanent uh, events at the bottom. They're divided into cycle quests and you can just farm these there. So Cloud was a blue crystal so we've used up quite a bit of his. So if I wanted to farm them I can click on these and go through them. The higher tier weapons or the level 60 crystal strength weapons are dropped to the level 70 quest. So if you want to, uh, the best thing to do is basically go to the highest tier possible that you can complete and do this again and again and again. In order to make the process of farming items uh, quicker, you can use support items and these can be used in order to uh, increase the rate, uh, the drop rate of your gear, your EXP and the items that you obtain. Um, you will get a lot of these thrown at you so uh, feel free to use them. But a uh, general rule of thumb is when you really need something, use the higher tier items, the tomes, tome of treasure, tome of fortune, tome of trading, because they will give you three times the amount. And then when you don't really care, you just want to burn, uh, and you have something to burn, use the lower tier items. So if you are gaining XP and you don't really, you're not really focused on it, you might as well use the book because you get so many of these. You don't, uh, you don't really have to worry about saving them. As well as farming crystals, you can also get gill doing this same method, and that is using the cycle quest of golden cactus at the bottom. Gill becomes very important as you need to use gill to develop your armors and develop your weapon. And the easiest way to do that is to do these quests here. Again, the higher tier one will get you even more cat, uh, for even more XP and more gill. So when you have a character that can complete it, such as the cloud that you're currently developing, go for it and uh, farm up gill when you need to. What I tend to do is I tend to burn my resources and then when I run out of it I then go and farm. You don't need to say this so you do it all the time but when you do need it now you know how to uh, do it. In terms of also getting weapons, uh, what the main way you get weapons is through banners. So right now if I go to the banners tab I can get weapons for Cloud, Lightning, Squall and also we have Rosa and Rita which literally just came out. And also Tylus is the main character right now for the current uh, set of banners. So we can go get their weapons that way. I want to talk a bit more about how to use these banners and how to spend your gems and your tickets wisely a little bit later on. But I do want to point out while we're here another way of getting weapons. Uh, getting your uh, CP15 weapon and also getting your lower tier armor can also be obtained via lost chapters. If a character has a lost chapter and you're able to complete it, you should be able to get two copies of their uh, high tier ar uh, their HD armor one, and also one copy of their CP15 weapon. So if you want to be cost efficient and you don't want to say this, so you use up all your tokens, you can try and come and do the character's lost chapter, and if you're able to complete it fully, you'll then be able to get some copies of their weapons and armor which you can use. 
if if you can't complete the uh, lost chapter because they do start off, uh, they start off easy, but then they get really, really hard. So these are the main easy ones. The ones with these little items here are for EX uh, level uh, tier content and going to chaos difficulty, which is level 180. And then you have Lufenia based content with the uh, with the purple uh, items here. That stuff you won't be able to complete straight away. So you won't be able to necessarily get all the characters' items, but do as much as you can, and then that will save you having to burn your tokens through the item exchange. But either way, it doesn't really matter too much. You're not going to really war uh, uh, run out of these because there's a nice way of easy to farm them through World of Illusions. So we've talked about how to develop your character's crystal level, their main level, and their armor. What do you want to do now? Well, there's a couple of things you can do, but what I strongly recommend you doing as your next big focus is going through Mog's Gym. Now, Mog's Gym it has two versions. You have the novice version and you have the intermediate version. Uh, to do the intermediate version, you need to have Yuffie and Yuna unlocked, which I strongly recommends that you do. And in order to get those two characters, you have to complete chapter two of the main story. As you can see, it goes up to level 40. And uh, now that you know how to level up your character, uh, you have characters that get to this level quite easily in order to complete them, but I recommend going through these. So first of all, you want to go back to the main menu and you want to go through Ruins of Deserta and work your way through there until you unlock Yuffie and Yuna, and then come back and do Mox Gym. So I'm going to now do that on this account and I'm going to meet you once I have those characters unlocked and I'm ready to go through Mox Gym. Okay, so I've just unlocked Yuna and Yuffie, and actually, this actually took me a lot long, longer than I expected to go through Chapter 2. It took me a couple of hours, so we're actually on a brand new day IRL here. So, I've also done more dailies uh, for today. I've done my hunt, um, I haven't done my hunt yet, but I've done my daily quest, got some more rewards. And by completing Chapter 2 to completion, we've uh, increased our gem, uh, count, um, gem count quite significantly, and we've jumped from Rank 12 to Rank 102. I realized that as I was going through the chapter, while I didn't mention this before, there's some stuff you can do along the way to help progress your account. One, I strongly recommend going through the chapter on hard mode and not normal mode. When you go through it on hard mode, you get the normal mode rewards as well for completing the quest at the same time. Now, if you're a little bit worried about your level of your characters, or whether they're, they feel they're undergeared or underpowered, one beneficial feature of this game is the support menu. Um, when you press begin for a quest, you can ask someone to help you out and it will give you players who are of a similar rank to you. Now when you have a low rank, you'll only get low rank players so you'll get people who have characters that are of similar strength to you. But if you can increase your rank, you can get players that are a little bit higher than that and, they, um, and then you can follow them so that they'll be on your support list and they'll appear time and time again to help you complete quests. This makes it very very cost efficient where you don't have to run out and burn your resources on incre um, improving your characters because you can use other people's characters as part of your party and save your resources for when you really, really must spend them. So I strongly recommend going through hard mode. The so other thing I recommend doing as you play through the chapter is to also increase the level of your party. Every character that you unlock, I, I strongly recommend immediately leveling them up to level 50. So in that chapter, we got Zidane, Dark Knight, Cecil, Yida and Vaughn, so immediately I went to the level up tab and then leveled them up to 50 because that all, that is what affects your rank and increases it and so by leveling all these characters to 50 we're now up to, level, to rank 102. There is another benefit of doing the rank but first of all we're now going to do our next goal and that is to complete Mog's Gym. Mog's Gym has some decent rewards. Um, there's really only one real reason why you want to complete Mog's Gym, as well as also getting like the tutorial for the game. Although by the time you come to complete Mog's Gym, I kind of felt like I knew everything that he wanted to explain uh, by the time you get to chapter 3 of the story, so it kind of is what it is. But when you complete Mog's Gym, you get 300 silver Mog tokens and uh, 180 gold Mog tokens. And you want these in order to access the rewards menu. And these are permanent rewards, you can buy them whenever you want. But the real price here are these high crystals. These high tier crystals are used to level up a character from level 60 to level 70. And they are quite limited in your supply when you start the game. 
when you start getting higher level characters and you can go through events and you can consistently tackle events, you'll get more and more of these crystals where it becomes a non-factor for you. But when you're starting off the game, you don't have enough really to kind of just say, spend it on every single character, which is why I said you only want to level a character up to level 60 because every other gem uh, that is a lower tier than this can be farmed um, through the cycle quest on the same menu, uh, pursuit of the mm, crystals. So you can get these crystals for, for as much as you want as, um, as long as you can farm them here. So, now that we've done Mog's Gym, the next thing that you want to do is finish off the Novice Missions. And the last two goals on the Novice Missions had to do with summoning. So, we're going to go to the Enhancements board and the first one was to be able to bind and uh, basically unlock Ifrit. I've already done so there, but if you want to unlock a summon, it will say Awaiting Patch. You just click on it and you'll be able to use one of these materials that you managed to get through the story because they come naturally to you through the story and just say bind the summon and then it unlocks. Now summons can be leveled up just like your characters. The maximum level is 30 but there is a cap of 20 and then you have to get to a higher materials to get to level 30. But there's a benefit also for leveling up your summons and I will talk about that a little bit later on. Now, the last goal of your novice mission is to level Ifrit to level 11. As you've seen, I've already done that off screen. But if you want to do it yourself, you're going to go to World of Illusions and you're going to go to Trials of Ifrit. And this is the other reason why you want to level up your rank as early as possible. Your rank is the same, the amount of your rank is the same value you have for your SP limit or your stamina points limit. The maximum cap you can have in terms of stamina points is 200. So the sooner you get to rank 200, the better, the more stamina points you can hold. Stamina points refresh at a rate of one every three minutes. So in order to refresh 200 minutes in real time, 200 points in real time, that takes 600 minutes, which is about uh, 10 hours IRL. Now you can supplement this with the use of potions. So if you do run out, a potion will fully refill your stamina bar, but you ideally don't want to burn your potions when your rank is low because if you um, use it when your rank is low and say your rank is only 40, you're only going to get potion value of 40 points. Whereas if your rank is at max of 200, you're getting 200 points every time you burn through your potion. But why do you need these points to begin with? Well, anytime you go for a World of Illusions quest, you have to spend SP in order to tackle it. And you will need to do this in order to farm the materials to level up your summons. Most noteworthy, um, as you go through it, it's basically doing the same thing and again, and again and again. You get materials to level up E for it or whatever summon you're doing. The part 3 quest is notable because it drops the materials to level up Ifrit from level 1 to level 11. And then if you want to level up Ifrit from level 11 to level 20, you're going to have to repeatedly farm the part 6 quest, the level 60 quest. And that costs you 30 SP. So it's really, really important that you level up your rank ASAP in order to be able to hold more SP so you can quickly farm these summons. And farming these summons should be your next primary goal. So the next goal you want to do through this game is rank up, uh, unlock more characters by going through the story, by going through lost chapters, getting some more gems along the way and getting more resources, uh, using the support menu to help you clear content. And then once your uh, rank goes up and you have rank points to spare, Go to World of Illusions and start unlocking and farming and leveling up your summons. Now the lower tier trials for the first 10 summons are these ones here. But once you get a, uh, a summon to level 20, you then unlock their ultimate trials. And the ultimate trials has two benefits. One, you get to obviously level up your summon even further from level 21 to level 30. But then you also get to farm illusion points. An illusion points is another resource that you need to fully level up a character. We go to the enhancements tab here. We have your crystal strength, which enhances your character's crystal level. Your level up, which levels up, levels them up, gets them more pa passives and more abilities. And then your training boards. Training boards has two types of content on it. So if I look at, uh, say, let's go for Cloud. Oh, that's Titus, whatever. Um, every character has a training board. And the training board looks like this. It's a bit of a branch and every branch is tied to an ability. So the top branch is tied to your first character's ability. Then uh, the second branch is tied to your second character's ability. The third branch to the right is their EX ability. And their bottom branch is tied to their legendary ability. Now there are locks on these boards. 
and you have to do certain things in order to get past these locks. So if I was to press auto for Tidus, the only thing I could do right now is this much here. Don't bother spending them, don't waste your uh, your points. You need 8,000 points to fully level a character's board, so really only spend them if you know 100% this is a character you're going to be investing in. And before you do that, you probably want to get all their weapons first, so you know you have access to the EX weapon or the legendary weapon before you even invest in their enhancement points. If I go to Cloud, because we've developed Cloud a little bit more, and I press Auto, so Cloud can do this much at the moment, but we haven't, if I quit this, we haven't, uh, Council, we haven't uh, made organics a passive yet by fully max limit breaking it and so it's not really worth uh, using this board for cloud but when you do come to level up a character you do want to use these enhancement boards you get enhancement points from doing events so this is why i said try to do as much temporary content as possible in order to collect these points because they are very limited then you have summon boards summon boards enhance your character's basic stats such as your attack your defense uh, your HP and so on and so forth and there are 10 of these boards for every single character and again when you want to fully level up, up a character you need to get the points to do these boards now the only way you do these points is by doing the level 100 quest in the summoned ultimate board by uh, using that character so I would have to unlock every single summoned ultimate level tier and then take cloud to fight them in order to earn points at their level 100 quest this can be very time consuming to do because you have to do it for every character but of course you can have three characters in the party and you can so do three characters at once to level up. Now this is something else you have to do and you want to have access to ASAP. What's really nice about the illusion board and also kind of the enhancement board is even if you don't have a character's um, uh, all their weapons and you don't necessarily intend to fully use them the stat boost alone from this can allow that character to clear a lot of high tier content because it's a very very significant boost in terms of your basic stats so although you might not have the whole kit just uh, doing these boards alone can be beneficial to you you also get gems and you get tickets and you also get uh, guard tokens by doing this so you can buy armor so it is worthwhile doing so so that should be your next priority just to reiterate again Go through the story again, keep on unlocking more characters, level them up, and increase your rank. As you increase your rank, uh, when you have time, go to World of Illusions and start uh, leveling up your summons by farming their resources and leveling them up to level 20. Then, when you get more confident and you're able to do so, uh, start challenging the ultimate version of the quest. Um, you don't have to complete these, you just have to tackle the level 100 mission, which isn't too hard to do, and you'll be able to do it eventually. So, that is basically the end of kind of like the beginner tier in terms of what you should be focusing on when you start this game um, and when you, uh, when you go forward. But of course, everyone is going to want to start to build your own characters. So when do you start really thinking about doing that? So let's talk about draws and talk about some principal philosophies and what you should follow that is agreed by the community for this game. Um, so we're going to go over to the drawers and shops. Whenever you feel like you're interested in a character and you think, ah, okay, I might want to start getting a new character, I want to start building on my roster, the first thing you, I strongly recommend you do is tap into those community resources, which I listed at the start of the video, and start asking the question, should you pull those characters? Is it worth investing in them? Get other people's opinions on them before you spend your resources, because... It does, uh, while these resources are e um, available in the game to get, it does take a long time. And there's nothing worse than, say, pulling for a character that you maybe only use one or two times and you don't really find it's too helpful to your roster. Now, it's very difficult for people to say whether you should get a character, for you, should get a character or not, because it depends on who you have available to you. For example, all the characters on the hit this board um, banner are damage dealers, so you might not want all three of them, you might want, say, this banner here, where Titus is a damage dealer, and Aerith is also a healer, so you've got a damage dealer, a healer, and uh, Selfie's also kind of a healer too, although we don't really invest in EX only characters anymore, because they're kind of out of date. So this banner might be better, but that again depends on when you start playing the game, it depends on what characters you have available to you, so you need to kind of tap into those community resources so you can make that decision yourself. When you are ready to go for a character, there's a couple of philosophies and rules you should follow. If you're going to pull on a banner, 
and you don't care if you don't get the whole entire kit and you're say just doing it for funsies you can use tickets tickets are free pools uh, but they have no enhanced rate to uh, their percentages and you can see the percentages for every single item that's in the banner so it doesn't enhance them at all and they are what they are um, and you get no guarantee of getting any particular weapon now the, what's really great about this game and why people say this game is so fair in terms of its gacha element is that this uh, every single banner has what are called GE tokens and that is anytime you do a multi draw if I go back to the start dash run anytime you do a multi draw you get 20 G tokens so if you keep on doing multi draws eventually you'll get enough tokens to buy the weapon you may be working towards so if I say I want to work on cloud and I want to complete clouds kit and I want to get his legendary weapon and I want to get his EX weapon I could fart save up enough gems to keep on pulling repeatedly until I get 300 G tokens and then if I don't get those weapons during uh, those pulls I can then exchange my 300 tokens um, as kind of like a consolation prize and that could should be your kind of your approach to any time you want to go for a banner in order to get uh, 300 G tokens for any banner you need to spend at least 75,000 gems that should be your goal now that might sound like a lot but just doing the beginner level content so far I've already got 48,000 gems and so what well, um, keep on going for the story do some lost chapters and you'll get them in no time every story gives you about every story chapter gives you about 10,000 gems but they are quite long and then every lost chapter are, lost chapters are shorter and they give you about 5,000 gems but you have to complete the whole thing so if you if there's a boss at the end that you can't beat you won't get all the gems but uh, that's another way of getting them um, and then when you get 75,000 gems then you can go ahead and pull on the banner and get those resources for yourself um, but if you uh, what I don't recommend doing is chasing these burst weapons Burst weapons are very fancy, they're very flashy, you've probably seen them by now and what they do, and they do provide really good effects. However, they're not required. You do not need to have a burst weapon in order to complete content, and your approach to this game should always be buying characters to complete content, not just because they look flashy. Unless they're your favourite character and you really, really enjoy that character and you want to have their whole kit, then go for it. But that being said, if you want to guarantee, say, get a character's burst weapon, um, to get 500 G tokens, you need 125,000 gems. Now, um, so you do need quite a bit more. I personally don't aim for burst weapons. Uh, all the burst weapons I've gotten have been just through sheer luck. And so I always aim for LD weapons. And if I can settle for a character having their LD ability, they're still usable and they're still able to complete end game content. But um, burst weapons are nice to have, obviously. Now, uh, so that is it. Uh, what we do in terms of pulling, in terms of approach. Again, this depends on when you start the game. Uh, and every time you want to pull, at least have 75,000 gems to guarantee that you get the item that you want to. So, that is basically it for my beginner's guide here. Uh, there's still a lot more to this game. And I strongly recommend checking out other resources like Tom Bay, Trope, and looking at their guides for like a glossary because there will be things that you maybe want to look over and check out again or have strategies too. If you have any questions or anything that I haven't covered so far um, in terms of more advanced stuff for the game, feel free to send me down a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Say that you have questions on armor, high armor, bloom tokens, artifacts. That stuff is not really for beginners, but eventually you want to work your way towards getting this stuff too. So if you want to learn about that, do um, feel free to get in touch. And yeah, most more than importantly than anything else, enjoy the game. It's a lot of fun. It can be challenging at times, but that's kind of what is the fun for it. I came to this game because there was a low in content in Final Fantasy XIV. I love uh, doing end game content in that. and I didn't find it challenging enough and this kind of filled that gap for me. And so I really, really enjoy playing this game and I don't regret it. So, uh, if you guys ever want to see more videos from my channel on, on my channel for the City of Final Fantasy Opera Omnia, uh, do let me know. I would love to make content on this game. Uh, maybe show you what my personal account looks like and show you some of my personal builds or my personal uh, teams. Or um, And uh, yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. I'm just thinking, is there anything else I want to go into? Duh, just to let you know, Dimensions End and Abyss are more endgame content. Don't worry about them from now. Uh, um, 
yeah, just to end out one more time, your priority should be getting more gems and collecting more resources to pull for characters. Go through the story chapters uh, uh, when you want to, and then go through lost chapters when you want to. Do temporary content when it's available to you as much as your characters will allow you to. Get those enhancement points, spend resources to collect those um, limited time resources before they get um, before they expire and you don't have access to them anymore. When you need to farm more resources, you've got your cycle quest to get more crystals or, uh, or more money. And yeah, I think that will do it. Thank you much, very much for watching this video. I'll see you soon. Take care.